Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Curtis chooses to warn Selena that she might be the next person on the shooter's list. Anna and Laura approach Cyrus for assistance, and Valentin finds out what will happen to Charlotte because she is pursuing Anna. Sonny wants Diane to personally take care of something for him when he gets to his flat. Dan shows up to see Sonny as she leaves. Dan alerts his father to the fact that he is being targeted for murder by the same individuals that killed Olivia Jerome. Dante goes on to say that these individuals have also targeted other mafia bosses, and it looks like there are multiple gunmen. Sonny is aware that at least one person, if not more, in his organization has deceived him. They must identify the traitors within Donnie's organization, he continues. You think I don't know how to run my organization? Snarls Sonny. Sonny exclaims that he's heard it before as Dante tries to explain that he's trying to help him. Dante wants his father to speak with him because he senses something more going on. Sonny claims he got rid of Dex and smelled out a rat, but he doesn't know the shooter's ID. According to Sonny, Dex was assisting Michael in gathering information against him in order to imprison him. He claims that after Carly became involved and the plan shifted, Dex was compensated to keep him safe and inform Michael and Carly. Sonny is furious that he is unable to forget and forgive Michael simply because he changed his mind. Dan remembers how Michael initially felt deceived by him, but later changed his mind and sought to shield him. It doesn't matter how Michael got there, according to Dante, his father needs someone near to him to protect him. Sonny claims that he has no place in his life for untrustworthy individuals. Dante realizes that in the last few months he has lost a lot of people. Where is Dex, he wonders. He is assured by Sonny that he is still alive and has left the town. Dante informs his father that he has more allies than he realizes, that these are perilous times and that assistance might come from unexpected places. Though he is concerned, Sonny is taking care of things on his own. The people who have endangered his family will go straight to hell, according to him. Valentin meets Laura and Robert at the Metro Court. They're here, according to Robert to talk about the fallout from Charlotte's behavior when she was pursuing Anna. If Charlotte consents to three years of probation, 1,000 hours of community service, and treatment with a court-appointed therapist, Robert says the DA's office will not press charges. Laura mentions that Charlotte is receiving therapy, and Valentin finds that ridiculous. Laura thanks Robert for being fair in this instance and heads out to her next appointment. Valentin hopes Robert isn't venting his resentment of him on Charlotte as Laura leaves. Robert thinks Valentin should be imprisoned rather than Charlotte. Diane meets Nana at the bar when she gets there. Diane gives Sonny's divorce papers to Nana. Sonny didn't even talk to Nana about this, which astonished her and made her believe that he was cooling off. During a separation, Diane counsels her clients to maintain little communication. Nana and Diane exchange insults, with Nina knowing that she doesn't like her. Diane says she's relieved Sonny has realized the truth about her. Diane and Robert head out together, and Valentin follows Nina. Diane recently brought divorce papers, according to Nina. Valentin claims Diane and Robert are an unhappy couple who enjoy moping over other people's tragedies, and Sonny is a simpleton. They raise a glass to luck catching them. Valentin queries Nina's emotional state. Nina claims to be inconsolable. She refused to talk to Sonny about it after giving him space for several months. Valentin quotes Robert's remarks regarding Charlotte in response to her question. Calling this ridiculous, Nina assures Valentin that she will always be there for Charlotte. Valentin regrets Sonny's passing and is relieved that Charlotte still has her. Nina is certain that she can persuade Sonny to reconsider but she needs to grab his attention first. Valentin advises her not to grant Sonny a speedy divorce if she wants to stay married since that will catch his attention. Diane becomes enraged over her comments with Nina, who says she doesn't have a life outside of the courtroom, as she and Robert ascend to his chamber. 
Valentin's claim that Robert is punishing his daughter because of his personal grudge makes Robert furious. They decide it doesn't matter what Nina and Valentin think of them, and they kiss passionately right away. Robert, who is starving, decides to order a lunch menu. When Anna goes to see Cyrus, the Port Charles Grill is closed. She claims she needs his assistance to preserve lives, her own included. She tells him that because of his past, he might be the next victim of these killings. But Cyrus replies he will trust in God, not the PCPD, for protection. She is aware that he continues to communicate with his flock in Pentonville. He believes she intends to take advantage of those who are dependent on him. Anna says that rather than relying just on his thoughts and prayers, he might assist in gathering facts to prevent these individuals from pursuing others. Although Cyrus doesn't deal with police, Anna believes he might be able to help them get the information they need. When Laura shows up, Anna excuses herself. Laura adds Anna suspected he could require additional prodding to assist them in stopping this assassin. Laura says he has her opportunity to verify his claims that he has turned a new leaf and wants to help others. Jordan shows up at Curtis and Portia's house to give an update, and Curtis tells her she's free to talk to Portia. Jordan tells them that although they now know Sonny was the target the night Curtis was shot, he wasn't the only one. Jordan clarifies that the FBI and PCPD are collaborating and it seems like they are going after leaders of organized crime throughout the United States. Curtis tells her he started working on his own inquiry, but his operation took priority. He thanks her for the update. Jordan proposes to talk to Anna about involving him in this investigation. Curtis says he'll skip this one as he can tell Portia is worried about the threat. Curtis says that his family and his recuperation are his current priorities. Jordan asks Curtis whether he discovered anything on his own and accepts his decision. Curtis recalls Sonny informing him that Pikeman had reached out to him for business and that they were connected through the WSB. Curtis says he is currently thinking about his family and that nothing comes to mind. Curtis warns her to use caution when out in public, and Jordan sends his best wishes. Jordan says that while they are talking, she and Anna are working on a strategy that needs Cyrus' assistance. Portia is certain that Jordan and Anna will apprehend the gunman as Jordan leaves. Curtis had to be honest with her after stopping her as she prepares to start dinner. Selena Wu is the person he has to warn because she might be the shooter's next target. Why does he feel the need to warn her? Portia queries. Since they used to do business together, he claims it's a courtesy. Portia acknowledges that she is afraid, and he spills the beans about the games. Curtis reassures her that Sonny assisted him in handling Selena, and that their business is over. He reassures Portia that he isn't associated with Sonny or Selena, but she still doesn't understand why he would assist the lady who attempted to steal his club. Portia is concerned about him. How are they unaware that he is also on this kill list? Portia queries. When Jordan and Anna talk on the phone, Anna claims Laura is talking to Cyrus and that Cyrus is being rough. Jordan reports that Curtis declined their offer of assistance. Returning to the grill, Anna watches as Laura keeps attempting to persuade Cyrus to assist them in stopping the individuals who are pursuing the mob bosses that he once was. Cyrus claims he doesn't care about Sonny, but where was the worry for the man who served as his victim? Laura claims that although she was worried, Esmond and Ace had already vanished at the time of his thrashing. After apologizing, Cyrus offers to assist them. Anna says they need him to go out to a prisoner through his Pentonville ministry. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.